the family. Uh, I'm going to just go through a couple things just because we've been so busy over the, um, the semester uh, since I last saw all, most of you in uh, Indianapolis. Uh, but I, I want to highlight a couple things uh, that I think are really important for us, and then we, we can get into it uh, however you guys want uh, to really handle the questions. So uh, first and foremost, uh, we are, hopefully you all saw the graduation success rate of our student athletes, 93%, continue to do that at an incredibly high level. Um, that will always be the standard here. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of our athletes in this day and age. There's so much coming their way, and they're still absolutely crushing it in the classroom. 13 of our teams had a perfect GSR. Uh, we just found out yesterday four uh, women's soccer players were academic All-Americans. One of our, our male uh, soccer players was an academic All-American, and then we're waiting on the other fall sports to come through. So I'm just really proud of them. Uh, football our program record at 93% GSR. So they're, they're, you know, as we talk about competition and what's happening all around us, and, and it's great, and, you know, uh, we'll talk about team achievements. I think that is a true testament to how hard our, our student athletes work. Um, you know, both in and out of the classroom. Uh, team achievements, we had 10 teams uh, currently ranked right now, uh, uh, whether it's their current rankings or at the end of the season. Our men's soccer team, I'm so proud of those guys, and Jeff and the team. Uh, they won the Big Ten Championship in men's soccer. We had uh, women's cross country, men's cross country, or women's cross country got to the NCAA Championships, men's cross country, the NCAA Regionals. Women's soccer in the round of eight, the Elite Eight had a tough game against Clemson. Uh, women's volleyball just finished up in the Sweet 16, and obviously we all know that we're going to uh, the Chick-fil-A Bowl. So it was a really, I'm proud of all our athletes this fall, did a great job. And I just came over from a 30-point win uh, in women's, women's hoops. Keats team's playing really well right now, uh, but that was great. Uh, Shea just dropped 40, which is, anytime you score 40 is impressive. So I'm proud of, of what they're doing over there as well. You know, our, our athletes, you know, one of the reasons why I want to bring this up too, and you know, in the semester, our, our athletes put in uh, 3,200 uh, hours in the community service uh, with our development and enrichment program, and so a really, really well-rounded group. And I don't think that when we talk about the 31 teams, I think that's so important to talk about how everybody is doing uh, everything the right way. And I'm so, I'm so proud of them. We talk about um, some of the things just from a you, you all know hopefully how important um, sport performance, uh, health and wellness is to me. Um, we, we've added two full. Uh, time athletic performance coaches kind of decreased the load that we had. We have 833 athletes. We've got to continue to focus on all of our sports. We, we just added, we've added those positions over the semester. Um, we've converted four part-time trainers to full-time. So now we have a better, uh, I, have to feel, I feel better about our grasp on, on all 31 teams there. And then, you know, we, I'm, I'm proud of what we've experienced with the four clinical psychologists has been amazing. Um, and it's been really remarkable how well they've adapted and our athletes have adapted to, to the challenges and being open and honest with themselves and with our clinical professionals. We're also working now to add in our sports performance uh, portion to that. But my priority 18 months ago was we had to get the mental health stuff uh, really figured out. So, um, you know, I think we're in a good spot there and we'll continue to evaluate and grow. And, um, we've, been, we've, had, we've been very busy in the construction space. And then uh, this will kind of, I'll wrap it up here. Um, uh, not only the, the monster projects that you know we have going on, but we, we really invest a lot in nutrition stations. We have five nutrition stations being created and built. Uh, those are not including the ones that Lash that's that's there. Uh, Pagula, uh, we have one now. Basically, every athlete has has that. We're enhancing that. Obviously, with Greenberg, and the facility at Greenberg. But now, you know, we're impacting all 833 of our student athletes from a nutrition standpoint that um, was not the case prior to us being here. And so. Uh, we're, we're very happy, whether it's white, uh, our, uh, the White Building, Multisport, East Area Locker Room, uh, they all have uh, up-to-date, modern, grab-and-go nutrition stations, which I think is, is incred incredibly important. Okay, so let's talk about just, um, uh, in May, obviously, uh, projects were, were uh, went to the board, certain projects, obviously, Beaver Stadium. Let me just, uh, I'll, I'll talk about Beaver Stadium real quick. We're 30% into construct the design of this building. Uh, this is like building a village. Uh, so I'm not trying to not answer any of your questions, but I haven't even briefed the board or Neely on where we are with Beaver Stadium. Uh, this is a major, major project. Um, literally 30% is like, where are the pipes going? Where do you got circulation? So I just, you know, that one is ongoing. Um, we feel really good about where we're headed, but literally we are looking at everything in this building um, it, it, from the east concourse to the main concourse to 
to bathrooms, to the west side, to the premium, to, I mean, there is not a thing we're not evaluating in this process. So I just want to, want to head that off at the pass. Um, but, uh, you know, just as important, we're 75% through design with Greenberg, um, the, which will be uh, our physical therapy, health and wellness recovery suite for all 833 athletes. It'll be the home of training table for all of our athletes. Um, so we are close to finishing that up. We're finishing up the fundraising. Uh, our goal is to have that uh, ready to go in the fall of 2025, try to break ground as we continue this momentum in, in, at some point in this summer. Jeffrey Field, you've heard me talk about it. We're 90% through that design. Um, we feel really good We're closing up on the, on the, the finances, philanthropical and, and capital gifts there. Um, we, it will have locker room, athletic training, strength training, team meeting rooms, office suite, concessions, locations, enhanced bathrooms, which will help us on game day as well in that corridor there. Um, but we're really excited what that's going to look like. Um, it's the way it should be for Erica and Jeff. When you have two nationally uh, ranked and, and national championship caliber teams, they will have the facility they, uh, those student athletes deserve. Um, and I know you probably have started noticing uh, some construction over at Medler, though it's a little different, not truly our uh, facility, if you will, uh, but it's a phased construction project. Uh, we began uh, with the plane surface, which I think Gambino put out there, and uh, the play-by-play -play of that. Uh, but we're upgrading the lights, putting the new scoreboard in with the spikes. We're working hand in hand with that. And then the next phases will include locker room, clubhouse, athletic training, indoor training area, and recovery spaces uh, in joint partnership with the spikes, uh, the spikes there. So that's been really good. And then finally, uh, I don't know if I said the East Area Locker Room, um, where we house really, we run about 500 athletes through that space in that weight room. Um, we are really close. That one's almost done. Uh, we are, I think we're going to hopefully go out for CM soon. Uh, that will be an enhanced training table. I mean, ex excuse me, an enhanced nutrition center, much improved sports performance area, uh, much improved weight room, um, where that houses uh, the two lacrosse and field hockey. Um, that building is taking a total transformation, and we hope to start that um, actually here in, in January, February, if we can get things lined up. Permit and all that. All right. Raise your I felt a little bit like James doing that. Yeah, uh, uh, all right. We'll start with Mark and then we'll go to Tyler. Pat, we still haven't seen you and Andy in, in the same room together. And, uh, <laughs> My man. <laughs> it's a all, doppelganger. In, in all seriousness, uh, James had mentioned some, expressed some concerns about the transfer portal, and the word he used was tampering. Uh, what recourse? Do, do schools have and, and have, have you brought this up specifically among your fellow ADs and, and, and other leadership? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, it's everywhere now. And yes, we, we talk about it ad nauseum. I, I think it is, we, we, we say this, but it really is a wild, wild west right now. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, we were in uh, Las Vegas for Olu's uh, award. Uh, you know, he was nominated in, uh, for the Campbell Trophy. And on our way there, we got an email of eight athletes, one of which was our own, who was not in the portal, and an agent was saying, hey, are you interested in them? One of them was our, and is not in the portal, was just shopping athletes around. I was not very happy that that's happening, and went to the NCAA officials there and said, how, you know, we shared it with them. So we're trying to kind of communicate everything that we see, but in the, in, in, it's hard because some people are showing it to me, some people aren't, you know, and it's just a really difficult spot to be in, and they're putting the student athletes in a really tough spot, too. Um, but I do think we are, uh, the, the, the tampering is real. And, um, you know, I, I had a conversation with, with uh, someone the other day, and they said, listen, the rules that are being made are actually, actually hurting the people that follow the rules, because we're trying, everyone's trying to do what's right. And so, um, I think James, you know, now I'm proud of them, what they did this this class. They did an amazing job. He does a great job with that. You guys will talk about that later today. But, yeah, it's real, and we try to just hand it over and say, here's what we're finding. And I, I got it, I can't say it's in the data. But, but it is a topic all the way. I mean, everybody's talking about it. Coaches, ADs, everybody in the business. Tyler, the pickle. Hey, Pat, how are you? Good. Uh, I think we've asked James a few times about how you have kind of handled the navigation of, of adding a coordinator or high-profile assistant coach curious, you just saw it twice in a one month span. What does it look like when James Franklin, he called it a full-time job, he had two of them then. What, if, as much as you can peel back the curtain yeah. in the setting, can you, can you peel back the curtain? Yeah, it, you know, it, it's an interesting question. I was like, what, two in like two weeks? Um, 
my guy, he is so prepared for these moments, which is a weird, right? Like, he just knows what I need. Um, it's how he texts everything. And it was great to go through this process because you just don't know, right? It's not my, I said this the other day, I'm here just to support him and help and be a, a sounding board. But um, very analytical. It starts with the analytics. What's the right fit? And, and how to, you know, the, the defensive coordinator, right? We're a four down team. And that's who we are and that's where we've had success. So that's probably got to be a piece of it, right? I'm probably giving him too much. He's probably okay. Look at that. Look how upset KP is. Uh, but I do think he's very, very focused on that. And then it, you, you start with the big list and you just start with it. And then it all becomes who's the right fit? Who, who comes in this building and fits? The, the, I cannot express to you that building works at such a high level and it is such a good group of people that he is never going to turn the keys over to someone that just doesn't fit in that building for whatever reason. And so it's very systematic, it's very thoughtful, all the things that you would assume. Um, and then, you know, when he makes this decision, he, he makes it, but he, he takes, um, he, he calls friends of people and gets different perspectives. It's not different than how I would handle, or how I handle uh, head coaching searches. Um, but he doesn't really, I, I, it's, it was really good to go through it with him. And he doesn't get phased by, I mean, he just, he has his process. It's like everything else, right? It's the one to know, here's how we're gonna handle it, and it's true to form and everything. Pickled in bed. Pat, you mentioned the Beaver Stadium project, but another one that you went to the board about was Lash and doing work on the second floor there. So have you started that yet, and what's your timeline for that? Yeah, uh, actually, that, that's a good one. Yeah, they're under construction there now. In fact, I was just over with James. James is moving his office out. Everyone's moving their offices. So once we head out here on Saturday, they'll start to, to really move on the construction. It's a great question on timetable. I, I don't know. You know it, it's, everything's probably around 12, 18 months. Just honestly, how it works. Um, but we're, yeah, some, yeah. So, but that, that, yeah, that's actually starting. They're already doing prep work over there now. So yeah, he's, he's they're moving offices, and moving the temp space. Ben and then Alan. Yeah, hey, good. Good. Um, would be a press conference without an NIL question. As the numbers Absolutely fly not. around for what it takes to do roster retention, do you think it's good or sustainable for the sport to have effectively outsourced? that budget to fans that are collectors? No, no, I, I don't. I, I, uh, I think, you know, I'm, thankfully I'm, not, I'm only spending probably 30% of my time dealing with this uh, NIL space, uh, which was vastly different when I first got here. Um, but no, I don't think that's the right way. And I think everybody would say that. Um, uh, I've said it repeatedly. I, 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 this is the one area where we don't have, um, I, I can't help our kids in the way I want to help them student athletes and um, it, it goes back to the, the, the tampering question and what's going on and no I, I don't think that's it's just not the way it should be um, so uh, we'll, we'll see how it evolves right I think it's still evolving I think we're right in the middle of this skinny world that we're in the NCAA and I think it's just a matter of where it, where it ends up Allie Daniel. Pat over here hey. Um, hey going off tampering and I all of that you're there's a lot more people in college sports than there used to be. Different industries, industries, think, um, people in general. Right. When you think about preserving a culture in an athletic department of this size with so many different voices, how do you go about doing that? Because you can't completely avoid NIL or avoid those things. Well, and it's not like you're trying to avoid NIL. But what you're trying, because it's, I, I, look, we all believe in NIL. I think it's the right thing. Name, image, and likeness. Our athletes should be able to do that. When you play in front of 110,000 or play continued wrestling the sellout crowds or Erica's teams who are the so I think that that that's it it's a it, but it, your, your point about culture is so important it's why I love being the athletic director at Penn State because I just read all off all these things that our athletes have been able to do off the, off the field you know and our coaches are at a high level where that culture piece really is important and I think you have to be really honest with your student athletes you have to be honest with your process. Don't get caught up in all the other stuff and, and, and find a way to continue to just um, do it the way that you believe can, can sustain. Because I don't think that's a sustainable model of just paying a player a year. Because locker rooms are challenging and you're hearing from everybody you hit it on that. There's always another thing out there that uh, someone else has started another agency. Someone else has started. And you got to run all those leads down. You got to, but I think we're, I believe with my 833 student athletes and our coaches that we have a place that hopefully they can be honest with us, hopefully they feel that, that there's trust, 
and that we're building a culture that we're all in it together. And uh, I think that communication is such an important piece to it, like any other organization. And so I, it's, it's a challenge. There's a lot of people trying to infiltrate that. Um, and, and I think James does a remarkable job. I think all of our coaches, really, Kale, everybody does a remarkable job of trying to do that. And you can't bat a thousand, but I think that culture piece of reference is so important. And that's why I love being here, because there's no undue pressure. You just do it the right way. Take your time. Do it the right way. Get the right, you can, we have everything that you can recruit the best. It's been proven. So, yeah, I, I think that culture piece is so important. Neil and then Ryan. Hey, Pat. Hey. Um, you have a Super Bowl ring there? Or? Oh, oh um, this is just my wrestling national championship oh, ring. Okay. Uh, of which I had nothing to do with. I was along for the ride, I think. Kale and the boys. Uh, James made his comments last week uh, about the tampering and whatnot, and uh, uh, Chip Kelly uh, had a little video. It seems that uh, a lot of high-profile people in college football are screaming for leadership. Um, what is the next step for ADs and commissioners to be working? Can you work with the NCAA? Or is it just independent of that? No. Yeah, I think you're, you are seeing it, which goes back to that question of like everybody's feeling it, right? Uh, we, we, and the Big Ten is, and, and Tony's done a really good job. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's nice to have a, a outset, uh, an outside set of eyes on some of the issues that, you know, we've been ingrained with forever. Um, I think, you know, Governor Baker's trying his hardest to figure it out and work through it. We have to work with them. Um, Tony has done a really good job of working behind the scenes with the other commissioners. It, I think it's not as easy to solve as I think we all know, but we know we have to fix it. This just can't, it's not sustainable, and it's not the right course of action. And so what that is, I think we all, we can see, I mean, honestly, like, that is as much as the time here on campus is kind of, you know, talking about NIL and the collectives as well, nationally it's become in our national meetings like a real priority. We, 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 and so, basically to answer your question, yes, we're all working at every angle. But, you know, you, you see the work that's, that, that uh, the commissioners are meeting with Congress and trying to get everybody involved to say, okay, I think we've had enough. How do we address it? And there's just so many layers to it. Though. And so that, that becomes an inherent challenge. And we're living through it, right? We're living through the real time uh, life of this whole kind of chaos. Which is hard. Ryan and then uh, Johnny. Hey Pat, over here in the back. Oh, um, right. With the Beaver Stadium renovations, have you guys discussed the possibility of maybe having an outdoor hockey game there? Have you maybe inquired with <coughs> the NHL about maybe bringing winter class to Beaver Stadium when all said and done? Hundred percent. Well, yes. Now the product. So the, the winterization is occurring as we speak. So that was kind of ongoing. So from that perspective, from the <coughs> renovation, we should be good. We're going to be good with that. Um, as you can see with Luke Combs, like. We have to use this building more. I would sign up right here for a, a, a hockey game in this building, you know, today. Um, like everything else, it just takes a lot of moving parts um, and, and working with the NHL. But um, I think there's a great opportunity to do that. Yes, and, and we're open. They know we're open to it. Um, but we've got to continue to, to, to use this building to generate revenue. And, and Look, it's a, I, I've told you I love this building. I think it's time that we, we open the doors and do, so we did some yoga, we did Lion King, we did, we're gonna continue to do different um, uh, ideas like that. I think Luke Holmes is the biggest example of, of what we're trying to lean into. There's other things outside of just hockey uh, that I'm, I'm not yet privy to tell you. I would, I'm very transparent, but it's not done. I'm a zero, zero on the clock guy when it comes to these contracts, but we're trying to get others engaged. And remember, you gotta have a special event to sell this building. Like, it's just not for everybody. And there's certain events that you could could handle the, the, the volume of this building, right? Johnny, then sponsor. Yeah. Pat, <laughs> right here in the middle. I'll see you right Oh, there it is. It's not in the middle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you, 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 that, you, know, you talked about the coordinators earlier uh, with Andy specifically, a guy coming from Kansas in a really secure you know, situation yeah. there with his contract and a reported decent buyout. I guess, what does that say about you guys with where you're at right now that you're able to lure a guy like that out of a pretty comfortable situation and, and get him here? Yeah, um, I mean, it's Penn State football. I, I hate to just be that bold, 
Um, I think, it's, honestly, I think it's a testament to who we have in that building, you know, um, it, starting with James, but the athletes and the, and the student athletes that we have in there, that, that you want to come in there like, oh, I'll work with that group. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go, you know, and see if I can help them. And, and uh, he was, and he's, he was with Lance for a long time. And, but I, his story is great. I had heard that story about the helmet, and uh, I, too, ran into trees with my head, so we are very similar. Um, so, but I do think it just shows like, where, we, where we are. Like we we are a top ten program. We are we are fighting to win a national championship, and that we are going to. That is our focus. We're going to continue to focus. We're going to hire the best people um, to do that. And I think uh, I hope Andy saw that in the process and saw that this was a great opportunity for him. And uh, when you start to get around our our you know James's team, meeting staff and players, you're like, oh yeah, that's special. And so, um, but it yeah he they they did everything they could and. Um, we're just really happy that it worked out. He's a great fit, though. Smelter than Ben. Pat, I know this year isn't over yet, but with your first full calendar year about to wrap up as Penn State's AD, how would you say things have gone from a personal standpoint, and what are you going to be taking away into 2024? Uh, that's you know personally, I I, I love it. Uh, my kids love school, which they don't get that from their father. Um, but they do. They love, we love Happy Valley. It's an amazing place. I'm not just saying that. We, we, we truly, my wife, uh, Betsy, and, and, and you know, being in the community, it really was a game changer for us to be in our house. Um, that helped us kind of get out of the rental and establish our kind of roots and being engaged and everything in town. But we, we really do love it. Um, you know, it's just we have so much to accomplish professionally that my staff would know this, KP in particular, like, I, I'm a grinder, like, I see what we can achieve every single day here. I get goosebumps putting on Penn State gear, and so, like, I just can't stop. Like, I just can't. Like, and that's 31 deep. We were on a golf call last night. Like, we got all these projects going, and we're talking about other projects for golf, and I'm talking about what we can do to enhance wrestling, what can we do to enhance uh, track and field, and what can, like, I, because you can feel it, like you can see, we can win and we can achieve so many incredible things that I think you all deserve, that our lungs deserve, and it's like, there's no ceiling here. And, and so for me, it's so exciting, but you gotta work within the process that's in front of you, which is like anywhere, and so I think it's been really, really, um, Exciting. I mean, look at I floated for two weeks after winning the Rose Bowl as a Big Ten kid to win the Rose Bowl. I never thought I'd do that. And um, you know, being around Cal Sanderson and, and that, our wrestling program, like it's amazing. And, and having the good fortune to be with our student athletes, which is the best piece, and going on this journey, three Final Fours last year, and, and and being able to help them with some of the stuff that we're doing is is really been a, a, an amazing thing. So I, I, I I'm very energized. I'm, excited about our future. I truly believe we haven't even gotten started yet. I think it takes two years really to get the foundation established um, where people aren't like tiptoeing around me like, eh. they probably still do that, KP still does. Uh, but I think we're starting to really get into a stride to really get to where we, we, we go. So I appreciate the question. Um, it's every day, is, and, and, and you know what I will say, it's bigger than I thought. I don't know if I said this before, but like you go on the road, and you, I don't care what sport, and you see Penn State and Nittany Nation there, I mean, like uh, football games, and like, I knew it was big, I knew it was a passionate base, but it is bigger, I tell people all the time, like, I'm like, you have no idea. What we do for seven days, not, not me, but what our team does to put on the events for seven football Saturdays here is short of miraculous. And to have as many people come in and to be passionate, win or lose, I would rather have everybody passionate um, is truly an incredible thing, and this building, I, I said goosebumps down, this building when the, you know, this football season was just, and I don't know how that ever gets old, and I tell everyone, Nick that knows this, like, don't take this for granted, because there's a lot of people that want to know where we are, um, and so it's very special, the whole thing is very special to me. We'll go to the last question to Ben. Uh, I wouldn't underestimate KB, by the way. Yeah, that's true. Text at odd hours of the night. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> From a football perspective, you could argue that all four teams joining the Big Ten are closer to you than not. The repercussions of that fact for you are insignificant. I don't care. I don't care. I'm worried about one thing. Us. We control our own fate. 
They are. I'm not, that's not disparaging them at all. It's just, what am I, I you know, I, I, what are you gonna do? Gotta get better? I, I, you know, it's like, it's a Penn State thing. It's not an Oregon thing, it ain't UCLA, it ain't about SC, it ain't about Washington. It's a Penn State thing. We gotta be Penn State. And that's going back to your question. We win the whole thing. We just gotta keep focusing on doing what's right for us. And it's dealing with all of this that's going around and deal with the culture issue that you talk about. And continuing to bring the right kids that wanna run through a wall and fight through it and are passionate like we have. Um, so I, 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 and that's not, I'm not making that up. I don't lose sleep over it. I may have if I was in other jobs, not here. I mean, and that's, by the way, it's not just a football thing. Baseball's gotten a lot better. Basketball's gonna get, volleyball's, I mean, all of our sports, soccer is gonna get more challenging. Okay, I'm at Penn State. We'll 31 deep, we'll, we'll just keep getting better. But all of these things I mentioned, you have to get done. We have to get all of these, the, the, the nutrition, the travel, the, the mental health support, the physical support, all of those things have to get done or we won't be able to achieve what we want to do. That's why I'm so aggressive in getting all this to get it ready so that we can attack those. Because they're, they're, they're coming and it's, it's, it's going to be a different day, um, one that we're all excited about. Thank you very much, Pat. Thanks, everyone. Hey, I appreciate y'all. I know you go everywhere. 